Okay, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, whenever you're watching this video. Here, I will talk about a few examples regarding orbital mechanics, okay? So you should be watching this after the lecture video, right? And uh, here, I will talk about a few proof or show you how they tend to ask you in the past year questions. It's going to be a past year question walkthrough, so the video should be fairly quick. All right, so let's begin. Okay, so uh, in this question, you have a pretty standard proof. Um, again, page number and year is already noted. So you can flip to your handout if you want to. So you have a circular orbit. This is a hint, okay? Radius is x. So in my lecture, right, I use r as radius. But since this time it is x, uh, so you should use x in all your notation. So from here, centripetal force provides... Uh, is provided by gravitational force because you're asked to explain your working okay so to find the kinetic energy you need to first find the velocity which i will use this pretty standard proof by now uh, gravitational force gmm over r square but you notice that i've replaced r with x and m as ms for satellite cancelling off i will get the expression v square is gm over x okay and then uh, to find kinetic energy EK, I will use half mv square. So I will substitute the v square as gm over x. ms is the mass of satellite. Okay, big M is the mass of the planet. So I will get that value, lah, right? So when doing this, right, you will also notice that um, you are asked to prove and explain your working. Since this is three marks, I'm going to now write down where the marks are. You miss out key steps, you lose mark. One mark, when you write out the sentence explanation, one mark when you substitute GMM and NV square over R, and one mark for believable algebra, convincing algebra. So you need to show half MV square. Part two, state an expression for potential energy. So this is fairly standard. Just make sure you substitute R with X, okay, and then M with MS. And then you must have a negative sign. So last part, derive an expression for total energy. So you just add the two expressions, law, GMMS over 2X plus negative GMMS over X. Um, you can do it slowly, but uh, I already know this is half plus negative 1, which is negative half. Okay, so I'll factorize at the side for you to see in case you confusion or you need a bit of algebraic help. So factorizing, thank you for coffee. <laughs> okay, so factorizing um, the terms, you will get half and negative one lah. Okay. So as long as you show that you add and you get the correct term, you will get your two marks. Next part. You have a small resistive force, okay, acting on the satellite, causing the radius of the circular orbit to change. So they are asking you to describe whether the quality increase, decrease, or remain constant. So before I proceed on the video, you notice all of this is one mark, right? If it's one mark, uh, you don't have to explain. You just write increase, decrease, remain constant. Which means you shouldn't leave that part empty, law. Make sense or not? Because if you leave it empty, <laughs> it's like you can shoot la, if you don't know how to answer. But in this case, since there's resistive forces, obviously there will be a decrease in total energy. Okay, And if there's a decrease in total energy, the radius of the orbit, how would the radius of the orbit change? So let's think about it for a second. Total energy is negative value. Okay, So if total energy decrease, this means uh, the magnitude of the negative number should increase. It should be a larger negative number to show that you decrease. Because negative value. Ma. That's why the x should decrease for a larger magnitude. Okay, think about it. If you've got a problem with this, talk to me. Potential energy should also decrease. This is again because of the more negative. Like negative 2 is, more, is a smaller number than negative 1 more negative okay because once again when x decrease potential is gmm over x so the magnitude will increase if the magnitude increase the value because there's a negative sign decreases kinetic energy like kinetic energy increase law because it is more positive okay so from here your ek is gmms over 2x so from here it's pretty straightforward when x decrease ek will increase okay Positive, ma. All right. So if you uh, play with the Sims or you think about the lecture video, um, I have actually shown this in that particular Sim where I drag the radius. If the radius decreases, the potential energy will drop. 
and the kinetic energy will increase. Okay, go and play with the sim or come and talk to me about it. Let's continue. So the next question we'll talk about is from uh, ON13, paper 4.1. Define gravitational potential. Children, my children. Gravitational potential should be at your fingertips by this point. So work done by unit mass in bringing it from infinity to a point in the gravitational field. Okay, so sometimes I write the sentence differently la, for variety. Okay, so um, part B. The moon may be considered an isolated sphere. And then you got these values of radius and mass. So right now, you are asked to find or to show that the change in gravitational potential energy of the rock moving from the moon's surface to infinity is this one. So you are asked to prove this. Lah. So in order to prove this, right, you, you will just put u is negative gmm over r. But because we are changing it from infinity, at infinity, the u is zero. So if you think about the graph, right, since the graph is this way, and let's say assuming that this point here is infinity, yeah, final. So the actual change uh, is actually an increase. That's why I expect to get a positive number. Or in other words, if you really want to do it, you will take the final, which is zero, minus the initial, which is negative. Okay, so now I can substitute gm, m, 4.5 over... The moon's, I mean, the radius of the moon, which is the moon's surface. Lah. Okay, don't forget to convert m to meter. One mark only. So it's the actual substitution that counts. Alright, next part. The escape speed of the rock is the minimum speed that the rock must give, must be given, so that it can escape to infinity. Determine your escape speed. Explain your working. Well, the change in GPE will be equal to the change in KE when the rock travels to infinity. So you should have enough energy to travel to infinity, as mentioned in the previous lecture video. So now I know the change in GPE when it travels to infinity. So I can use half mv square minus zero. Because minimum speed, ma, we assume when you reach infinity, your speed is zero. So just solving this equation should give you the speed. Last part, the moon is assumed to be isolated in space, but the moon is actually orbiting the Earth. State and explain whether the minimum speed for the rock to reach the Earth from the surface of the moon is different. So right now, our uh, Earth will attract the rock away from the moon. Make sense? So this is one point. So if Earth is helping to attract the rock away from the moon, the escape speed is lower because you got some external help. Lah. All right. So just consider that as well. Okay. Next part and May June 14, paper 4 2, page 29. So your mass m of a spherical planet may be assumed to be a point mass at the center of the planet. Okay, so again, you're given a circular orbit and show that the orbital speed is this one. Explain your working. I showed this in the lecture video already. So I'm just going to quickly talk, you, talk to you about this. Explain your working. So we need that sentence. Gravitational force provides centripetal force. Centripetal force is provided by gravitational force. Any form of that. Lah. So always check your symbols. G capital M lowercase m for this one. The distance is r square. This will be equal to centripetal force mv square over r. Simplifying, you will get this. Good job. Proven. One mark for each. There's nothing much to write there. Okay. Anyway, the second stone initially at rest at infinity. Okay. This is obviously not in orbit. Lah, all right. Travels towards the planet. The stone does not hit the surface of the planet. Determine, in terms of the gravitational constant and the mass m, the speed v0 of the stone at the distance x from the center of the planet. Explain your working. So normally when they draw like this, uh, student panic. Because you are used to it being a straight line. Then you rotate the paper a bit. Long. Then it's a straight line already. Long. Because whenever we measure distance, we have to measure from the center of the planet. One. Okay? So, explain your working. Uh. So I can say that the stone from infin is from infinity and is initially at rest. Because the stone is from infinity, the potential energy is zero. Initially at rest, then the initial Ke is zero. So because of this, I can say that the change in kinetic energy will be equal to the change in gravitational potential energy. Right? So I think you have seen this pretty lot of times already. Okay, anyway, half mv square minus zero will be zero minus negative gmm over r. We have talked about this before. 
All right. So simplifying this, you will get V not square. You know why they say explain your working or not? Because students are very good at memorizing. So some students will straight away jump to here because they memorize when to put a two, when to not put a two. You put the two here when it is it is the escape speed la, or you follow the question. Okay. If it's an orbital speed, then you shouldn't put a two. But Normally, when they want you to use this kind of equation, they will ask you to prove it first and you are expected to explain your working. So memorizing is not beneficial for you in this case. You should know how to prove the equation. Okay, and this kind of proving shouldn't take you very long. Like if it takes you very long, it means that your Kung Fu is not there. Not enough EXP. Please do more past years. Okay, so do not memorize this equation. They look similar, but they are not. So many GM, GM, GM. And then got square root, la, no square root. La, got 2, la, got 1 over 2, la, got 1M, la, got 2M, la, got R, la, got R squared. So many things. How? So please understand the root of every equation, pun intended, the actual derivation property of the equation then it will help you decide what to do ma. if you don't if you memorize this and you don't know where it comes from you confirm will get zero out of three already because you cannot explain your working maybe it will give you one mark la for memorizing good job so physics generally do not take to memorizing very well okay so rant over let's continue so here this is your speed it's at a distance x and then you notice that oh you fix this okay so i don't know whether you caught that in my ranting all right, so writing this whole thing is one mark, okay? Substituting the right equations left and right is one mark. The final form is one mark. Use your answer to explain whether the stone can enter the circular orbit. Okay, so this one is the orbital speed. This one is greater than the orbital speed, right? So if this is greater than the orbital speed, cannot enter the orbit. Lo. All right, so for all values of x is equal to r, v0 is always greater than the orbital speed. So 2 gm over r square root is greater than gm over r square root. So the stone will not enter the orbit. Okay? So I'm going to link a video called Spandex Gravity. Okay? And if you actually attend my live classes, I will actually talk you through the video in the class discussion. And please try your task. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.